Welcome back and Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas Day 2018. So uh, let's go ahead and get going here. I have 30 minutes before my oven goes off. <laughs> so I'm in the middle of multitasking here, but let's get some, some turns in. And uh, while I was gone, I made this, which I know looks like chicken scratch, but I can read it pretty well. And what this is, is this is all the uh, bonuses for the uh, characters in the game. And, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. That's the one I decided to scrap. This is the new one. So I sorted them by the phase. So the combat phase, these characters have combat bonuses. On the movement phase, she gets a bonus. On recovery, these are the three. And then on passive, those three just have a passive bonus that applies all the time. Um, if you may recall, I was really struggling with, okay, I know they have this bonus, but when do I apply it? And so now I have the exact phase on when I would apply their various bonuses. Um, the only thing that's really super ugly here is uh, teacher, Miss Featherlake. Her check is simple. It's just a 1d6 and a 6 makes a Degal. But she has like a laundry list of locations she can do it in. It's not just the school. So um, it's the school, the shop, the garage, the surgery, and then the uh, cricket uh, pavilion and the newspaper is what this last thing is supposed to say. I ran out of room. Um, anyways, uh, as you can see, I got it all on here. The only thing missing is the, um, is the policeman. But uh, we know that he just does the chaplain check. And uh, so we can do that. And so before I get them confused again, this was my old way. And you can see I was doing the phases this way, uh, but the space was so tiny and I couldn't get everything written in. And I was like, you know what, this is ridiculous. So that's why I uh, switched it. So um, <clears throat> anyways, that's gonna help us uh, to get through this without having to look up so many times what they do. And what we're at is we're at the movement phase. So I wanna get my injured guys to the surgery our doctor is still trying to heal up the pub people. So it'll be a while before the doctor returns, but we still want to get our injured guys here. Obviously, these four Germans want to go into the surgery, so that's a problem. Those injured guys need some protection. We're going to leave McGowan here to shoot at them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, some folks from over here to come over and help uh, take out these Germans. So uh, one of the things is the police officer will stay there to help guard the east side in case somebody comes from the east. Right now, nobody has. Um, so uh, let's get some movement going here. So first of all, let's look at our injured Clark. You can see he only moves on a three or less. So uh, he may not move, which he isn't. So he's stuck here for a turn. Uh, but we can do our... I was saving these for anti-tank, but if I'm desperate, I can use this to try to kill those. Um, we have Reynolds over here, uh, and I think I'm going to move Reynolds over. So uh, he moves on a six. So no matter what I roll, he's going to move. So he moves on four spaces. So let's figure this out. Um, this would be one, two, and he could shoot from there. And what's Reynolds' bonus? I'm going to check that real quick. Um, he gets minus one German terrain. Okay, so remember, the Germans are going to be attacking here. That's where they want to attack. Uh, or actually, they attack wherever the most characters are. So if I leave him here, they'll attack here, and then this would give the Germans a zero to the terrain. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep moving and go here. So if the Germans attack the surgery, uh, Reynolds will reduce the terrain to zero. Oh, hold on a second. And here's why I'm saying hold on. Thorncroft gives a plus one terrain bonus, but not if Reynolds is in the same space. So for whatever reason, he and Reynolds don't like each other. So, so I guess I'm putting Reynolds back here. Reynolds will stand here and, and he will uh, shoot. Now, um, as you can see, I'm trying to group the items with the people, but these items are all just there. And so if you wanted to rearrange them at any time, you can. These are just all available as weapons. But once you use the weapon with the person, you can't all of a sudden use the same weapon with somebody else when it's their turn to attack. That's the only rules here. Uh, there is no sense of ownership beyond that. I mean, you can freely swap them in the same space. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get Thorncroft moved over, and he has a six. So he's going to move no matter what I roll. 
and that's the worst roll possible because Thorn Thorncroft, as you can see, needs at least a two. So that was absolutely awful. And so I'm going to just move him one space to here. And uh, we need some serious help. So we're going to get Hodges moving. I rolled a one. So again, the most awful roll possible. And then we might as well get James Arnold, even though he has no weapon, we got to get him to help. Uh, so we rolled a four with him. And so he's going to at least come up and try to help there. Now, the Germans are going to attack here because this has the most uh, people. But uh, one of them's injured, and of course one's injured over there. Um, so uh, that's our issue, and there's four Germans to take out. And these two guys, they needed one more movement, and they're not actually able to attack. So we rolled awful. Um, that's basically what I'm trying to say. I could move the police officer up there, but I don't know if I want to. Uh, so here's what I could do. I could, um, you know, when these guys rolled their ones, I could just keep them where they are and not actually move them and then try to move the police officer down. But I'll, I'll leave things the way they are because I didn't know I was going to roll a one twice at the time I made that decision. Now, this Drayden Fox guy uh, does give combat bonuses. So let's try rolling him. He has a three, so it's a real rare chance he'll get to move. See, I rolled a six, so he doesn't get to move. And looking around, I think we'll leave everybody else where they are. Uh, Miss the Feather Lake is in the school. Um, I just learned that she can make her de Gaulle in the pub. So we're going to try to move her to the pub so she can help out with the battles there. And she got a two, so she's going to move up to the pub and she can make de Gaulle's from there. So um, <clears throat> the pub is right now heavily, heavily defended. But everything else, not so much. I wanted to get Drayden over, but that's fine. The only other thoughts I have is, should we get, like... See, the Women's Shooting Club uh, doesn't have any guns. So uh, to do a ranged attack with them, uh, I guess they inherently have a weapon because they can range attack with a two. Um, I'm pretty sure they don't need to have... Like, they have... They have some form of weapon that gives them a two. Let me make sure. Or do they actually have to have a weapon equipped? Nope, you must be carrying a firearm. Grenade or other type of ranged weapon. If it doesn't have a ranged weapon, it cannot participate in combat. So uh, that's troublesome. Now one thing I can do is I can take this Mills grenade and give it to them and then move them. And I think I'm going to have to because these Germans have me really concerned, especially with how many injured people we already have. So I rolled a six and guess what? They don't get to move. So that <laughs> hurts. Um, I can try to move Reverend Barnstaple. So let's do that. And I rolled a six and he doesn't get to move. Um, so I'm having the worst rolls uh, possible and, and I want to roll those sixes of course when I'm attacking and watch they won't show up at all and then lastly let's move our doctor okay I got a two the doctor is finally able to get to the pub so the good news is is that everybody in that space rolls for healing so if I could somehow get these two injured guys all the way up to the pub I could have healed with them too but that's not going to happen this one tried to move and couldn't and this one only has a movement roll of two so uh, I think they're better off in the surgery and just wait there. So uh, we're done with the movement phase and now we do German placement. So we're gonna roll two dice, and see what we get. So I rolled a six and you always need that, that little chart. I never had this stuff memorized. All right, so uh, just a quick recap. Um, we're still, uh, our threat level is only three, so only the seventh Flieger Corps is coming out. And I rolled a six, and we're on turn four. So we use the second row here, and a six means they're coming from the south. That is bad, bad news. All right, so let's see where from the south. Uh, I rolled an 11, so they're coming out in the exact same spot that they're already in. Uh, and then how many are coming? We need to roll again. 
and I rolled an 11, which is even more snooze. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five more units are showing up. We now have nine total Germans in this space. I've never had this happen to me before, uh, where there were so many in one space. Uh, I think we have to... Okay, I, first of all, I'm really upset that these two didn't make it, and we're in a very sad shape. Uh, we could, we can't move anymore, so the movement phase is already over, so we're stuck. And we know for a fact they're going to attack here, so we need to give them all we got. And I tried to move the Reverend there, I tried to move the women's hunting team. Uh, I tried to move, I even tried to move the reporter. Um, the only thing I didn't try to move was the police station officer, but I was concerned that maybe they'd come from the east. Um, okay, we're in sorry shape. So, let's move on. Uh, the next phase is the British combat phase. So we get to attack. So I'm going to start with this square here. And as we said, um, Reynolds gives a minus one to the German terrain. So... The Germans will not get a, a one here. That's a zero for them, so that helps a little. Um, and then there's no other bonuses. Uh, this guy's injured, so we're going to use the, the gammon, even though that would be great against tanks. Uh, right now, we have way too much concern. Uh, I can attack with everybody else first. So, so here's the rules. You go one character at a time, but you have to do it all from a space. So... I have to resolve, if I start with this guy, I have to do these two before I can go to another space. So um, so let's do uh, McGowan with his Webley. And you can see here he rolls two dice and a six hits. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit over so we have a nice spot to roll here. And of course he misses. I was rolling the sixes when I needed to move. Okay, so now we got uh, Reynolds with his shotgun, and that's five dice. So... Uh, unfortunately, he needs a six. It's not a five and six, but still, five dice is pretty good. And I got one single hit. That's it. So we we kill one German unit and nothing more. All right, so uh, now we go to Clark, and he has the gammon. And the gammon says that after you use it, it goes back to the equipment container and uh, it's unfortunate, but it'll give me two more dice, and I need it. And it did work, so I got one hit out of that. Um, it would have been more awful if I would have gotten no hit at all. So I'm going to put this back in the cup. All right, so Clark has no weapon at all, and he's injured. Um, but I didn't want to do melee with him. So now we have another gammon here, and again, I have to use it. So this time, it's a complete miss, so it's a wasted grenade. And, and then we have James Arnold here, who can do a melee attack. But if he does, I, I get to roll one die for all of these. And if any of them are a six, he gets injured. I'm not going to do it. So uh, it's just, it's a suicide run. And uh, uh, we're in serious trouble. Okay, so... Um, we're done with our attack phase, so now we go to the German combat phase. And I do still have to look up the rule book uh, for this. Um, basically, we know that they're going to... Yeah, so we know this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units in a square, okay? So, um, so it's this chart up here. So we're looking at the seventh Flieger. There's seven units in a square, so he gets to roll seven dice. He gets to roll one more because this is in the square for eight. And then um, he would get one more here for nine, but we know that that's not going to happen because Reynolds made it a zero. So he gets to roll eight dice and a six hits. So we need a miracle roll here. Three, four, five, six, seven... Eight dice, we need somehow to roll eight dice and get zero sixes. Um, 
And we know for a fact that they're attacking here because they always go after who, whichever square has the most. And we have three here and there's only two there. Um, now, if they do hit, it's going to be these two are going to be prioritized first with him being a higher priority than him. Characters are always lowest priority. Um, but once both of these are injured, then he becomes, these two become the higher priority. Um, but uh, anyways... I just dropped a die. One second. Okay. We rolled awful so far today. Now is the one time when karma needs to come back. Come back, baby. Low bucks, low bucks, no whammies. Stop. Oh my gosh. We did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh my. So we survived. <laughs> um, okay. That makes up for things. Um, we are now at the end of the round, so we go to the recovery phase. So um, looking at the recovery, we're going to do a De Gaulle check with Miss Feather Lake. So I'm going to move this a little bit over. And she needed a six, so that doesn't happen. And then Dr. Greystone is going to try to heal the uh, bar patrons and Miss Tanner. So that's two dice. And the bar patrons will be red and Miss Tanner will be blue. And they need an, a six. And neither of them heal. So that ends that, and we move to turn five. Okay. Um, these Germans are a serious issue. We go to the beginning of the round, and I already moved the turn marker. So now we have to choose our strategy card. Um, new troops come out once we get to phase four. So the question becomes, is do we continue to try to get tactical cards, which so far have really not been that exciting? Um, I mean, this one gives us a Mauser pistol, which is a nice pistol because you hit on a five or a six with it. Um, the other one basically is a turn of peace. So the, for example, these Germans would not attack, but we don't get to attack them either. So that's a, I'm not so sure how useful that is. And then of course, uh, this is, makes it even worse. If we don't get another character card to use, Reynolds is disappearing from the map. And so we're going to lose our one guy that actually is able to kill things. And um, it's bad. So if we do the British strategy card, just as a reminder, all that's going to do is give a bonus to our blue die so we don't move the invasion marker. If we do this, obviously they get a bonus to their red die, which has a good chance of moving the invasion marker. And once we get to four on the invasion marker, then that allows... So you can see here that with a four plus, uh, the fifth light infantry is going to be activated. So we would be basically rolling dice for both of them to enter the board instead of just one. Uh, so the game gets a little more intense. And if they both enter from the south, then you can see how crazy this can get. Um, so this is a big turning point here. Uh, I was really hoping to have better weapons by now through either of the phases that gave us uh, weapon draws. Um, I think I have to risk it one more time. So I'm gonna risk it one more time. Let's get out the German strategy card. It is weather starts to improve, 16. And I'm doing it because I wanna get some more tactical things to help us. And uh, let's check out event 16. Okay, 
The weather for the first four days of the invasion was exceptionally mild and sunny. Adolf Hitler noted in his diaries, I woke at 5 a.m. to thunderclouds over the chancellery, immediately contacted the Situation Room and asked for the weather over the channel. When they reported clear skies, good visibility, and calm seas, I knew Providence was again smiling on me. Uh, so they only get a plus one. So that's good. That is good. So plus one is not as bad as the plus four was. So as long as we do some hot rolling here. So let's get a low red. Low red. Big blue. No whammies. Stop. Oh, look at that. We did it. The invasion marker did not move. Okay, so next is the equipment phase. So let's grab an equipment token. All right, and here's what I got. A shotgun. All right, that is good. We're going to give that shotgun to the uh, women's team here, and they now have um, a decent... And remember, they can have three weapons, but right now I don't have three weapons to give them. Uh, but that is good. Very, very good. Okay, so some of the luck is changing. Next is the tactical phase. So let's draw our tactical card. Corner of a foreign field, 58. So let's figure out what that is. I still wish he would have just put the bonus on the card so I can skip the flavor text. I know maybe some of you watching enjoys the flavor text, but I don't. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> All right, 58. Um, a number of fields around Berkham Stokes had been prepared with crude anti-glider and anti-parachute traps. At around 900 hours, two gliders carrying follow-up waves of 7th Flieger Corps struck a number of obstacles whilst attempting to land in the field of local dairy farmer John Balkins. Resulting in significant casualties. Effect. During the German placement phase, you may use this event to prevent any 7th Plieger Corps currently off board from entering play this turn. And then we have a 3. So, um, so what that means is I only need to roll a 3 to be able to use this event. Now, that seems like an awesome event, uh, but here's our issue. <clears throat> um, this is the situation. Only one is going to be deployed this turn. Because if these were to be deployed, they, they just refresh and then they don't get deployed until next turn. The Seventh Flieger Corps is almost entirely here, so there's hardly anything to place. There's only going to be one guy that gets placed. So we don't want to use this yet. We want to use this whenever that stack is big. So um, let's not use that. Now we have two other things we can use. This is the Peace one, and then we have the Mauser one. So I'm thinking let's try the Mauser one. And, of course, since nothing's written on the card, I have to go look up the event again just to figure out what our die roll is supposed to be. And that's the annoying part. All right, I need to roll a six. Now, understand that because our uh, invasion marker hasn't moved much, it's still a minus one. So uh, I need to roll a seven. So it's possible this might not happen. Uh, I rolled a nine, so we got it. So this Mauser that's off board is going to go in the pub. And that's pretty good because um, actually nobody there is really good at firing weapons, but we can give that weapon to somebody. And uh, um, they have a zero for their ability, but they can at least roll one die for the Mauser. I think um, the Women's Institute or the South Sussex Hunt would be perfect for it because they can have two weapons. Um, let me make sure... I verify where exactly it goes. Yeah, it goes in the pub. So what I can also do is uh, the doctor can carry it with him when he comes back to the surgery. So while he's carrying it with him, the women's hunting team can pick it up. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, those people that are in the pub, those are all melee. So they don't necessarily... They, they, they can use the, the gun... But here's the thing, if you have a gun and a melee, you're either doing range combat or close combat. You can't do both. So that's the one thing you gotta be mindful of. So um, anyways, uh, that's it. We accomplished this. I don't need to keep the card anymore, so I'm gonna discard it. And um, 
Now we move on to the character card, and we need this to be a good one, or otherwise we're going to be forced to remove Reynolds, which we don't want to do. So let's see what it is. Ooh, this might be a good one. But look, it says turn eight. No! <laughs> okay, so we can't do that one. Let's just see what it is. 72. We're going to lose Reynolds. It is a far, far better thing. The defense of Berkham Stokes was distinguished by countless acts of heroism. Four George Crosses were awarded to civilians in the immediate aftermath of the battle, and in 1970, it was announced the village was collectively being awarded the Queen's Gallantry Medal. Select one square that meets the special case criteria. Following the German movement phase, roll 1d6 for each unit you wish to participate in the action. On a 5 or a 6 of any dice of the dice, all German units in the adjacent square are removed off board, and a German control marker is also removed. If no 5s or 6 are rolled, all the British units that participated are killed and removed from play. Oh my goodness! Two or more character or home guard units must be adjacent to a square containing at least three German infantry units. This would be perfect, actually, for this turn, because we could kill all those Germans in one fell swoop. But we would need to make sure there's a lot of units in that space, because if I fail to roll any fives or sixes, they're all killed. Oh my gosh! This is like, um, this is the go big or go home. <laughs> oh, this game is so swingy. Um, okay, but we're stuck with 89. Okay, so if you remember, uh, Reynolds um, had some run-ins and he's running. Remove Reynolds from the board and move him one space to the right on the chaplain track. At the start of every recovery phase, we get to roll 1d6. On a 5 or a 6, he comes back in the church and remove the event. If Reynolds is identified as a chaplain while he's off board, we immediately put him in the church. Uh, event cannot be deployed while Reynolds is in a square with Daisy Woods or before turn 5. So if we would have put Daisy Woods in his square, I did not know that. Um, so I would have tried to move her in the last movement phase. So let's, I, I know that's going back a turn. And I apologize, but uh, I would have tried to move Daisy Woods because Daisy Woods has a six. So let's do it. Let's see if Daisy Woods could have moved in his square. Uh, I rolled a four, and so she would be able to go. So one, two, and, uh, and she then prevents us from doing this action. So as long as Daisy Woods is in his square, he doesn't run away. So I'm going to do that, and uh, I know I'm going back a turn to do that, uh, but I totally forgot that that was one of the conditions that could prevent us from doing this event. So um, we definitely do not want to lose him. Now, uh, could she have attacked last turn? Yes, she could have, but I would never have done it because she's melee, and we would never have gone melee against these, just like James Arnold didn't. So, so there's no other change. All right, so I can't put Reynolds in this space because I'm trying to get Thorncroft to go to that space, and for whatever reason, those two guys don't get along. And then Thorncroft doesn't get to apply his bonus. I also forgot to do this bonus. So we did a, um, uh, that terrain bonus lets us roll a die. And we got a six, so one of them is killed. So that means we would have rolled one less die for the Germans, but that's fine, they all missed. And then even worse, we get to roll this one for two. So uh, there's a lot of stuff from last turn that I'm, I forgot to do, and I rolled another six. So we would have killed yet another one. So we did a miracle roll with two more dice in the, in the roll than we were supposed to have. Um, that's fine. Uh, the good news is, is we actually killed more than we thought. And so now it's our... So uh, we're required to do a character event, but we can't do either of the character events uh, because... Daisy's in that spot, and that's what we wanted. Um, and let me just make sure. I'm going to look up the character event rules. If any activated character events do not meet their special case criteria, you must choose to deploy one 
eat. It says do not meet their special case criteria. You must choose to deploy one. Oh, I don't... That daisy thing wouldn't have helped me. So I'll put daisy back because that's where she was. And there's nothing we can do. We have to deploy one, even if it doesn't meet its special case criteria. So, uh, so what's happening is, is he's going off map and he's just going to go here. And then during the recovery phase on a five to six, he shows up in the church. It doesn't say anything happens with his gun. So I'm just going to leave the gun there because uh, I'm assuming it gets dropped and we can use it like Clark can use the gun for a ranged attack. And then this event, as crappy as it is, is in play, at least for now, and then eventually uh, will go away. Um, we have a Betty, Betsy Turner event that means that she gets to... Oh, all British close combat attacks involving her Uh, get to roll twice, and that includes the other people in her space. So that's actually really good, assuming that we ever get anybody else to attack the pub. Uh, okay, so um, sorry for that. I uh, That whole forced thing, um, there's, there's special case criteria you have to meet to be able to deploy these cards, but the forced thing ignores the special case criteria. It happens whether you want it to or not. So uh, the character event cards are triggering every round. Um, so what's interesting is um, the, the turn one, I don't think, gets trumped. That's the part that, that's really bothering me, because the turn thing is not a special case. That's just the turn that it can happen. Um, Sorry, I'm reading rules. Sorry for the silence. Okay, so it says, if no character event cards are currently available because none of the special case criteria on the currently activated cards can be met, then the character event phase ends. All cards currently activated, including the one just drawn, remain activated. If any char activated character events do meet, oh, it says do meet their special case criteria, you must choose to deploy one. Okay, back up, back up. I, I missed it. I missed it. Reynolds is not gone. That daisy thing we just did worked. So I'm glad I reread it. So um, this actually prevents us from doing that event. Okay, this makes more sense. Okay, so with that giant delay, where are we at? My oven is beeping. That's where we're at. So when I come back, we are going to be at the British movement phase. So uh, thank you for watching. Stay awesome. Um, so one of my apologies in this is that I could have done a full playthrough of this and worked out all these kinks on my own and then did maybe a more solid playthrough with you. But uh, I just want to reemphasize re that this is about you joining me at the table. And so I want you to be a part of my playthrough and not, you know, I'm not as concerned about being polished. I know it frustrates some of you, and you put that in the comments, and I get it, and I apologize. Um, but uh, anyways, I'm trying to explain everything going through my thoughts and uh, let you be a part of this experience. And um, I think that when it's your first time to play, you'll be looking up the rules just like I am. I know this is not my first time, but it's my first time in a very long time. This is an old game. Uh, but anyways... Uh, I'm trying to make sure I get it right, and again, please accept my apologies, and I promise that as there's many more rounds left in this game, uh, this will get very smooth. Uh, I don't need that many more rounds to get these kinks worked out. Uh, we will have to pause again when tanks show up, because <laughs> I promise you, I don't remember the tank rules, um, but they're not here yet, so we're fine. Okay, so we're going to get to... It's going to be the, the British movement phase and then German placement.
and my uh, oven is still beeping, so I gotta go. Stay awesome. Thank you for watching.